Dominaria has given us a lot of new legendaries, like a lot a lot of new legendaries. But one of the cool things they've done is revamp some of the original Legends legends, so that they are playable in modern Commander. Cards like Rasputin, Stang, and Zira. All back with abilities that are like what they originally had, but with a new twist. It also helps that some of these characters only had a reserve list card, so now we are given an affordable option as well. But today's deck tech is going to be all about the new Hazazon, Shaper of Sand. Now original Hazazon was a bit of a glass cannon deck. He was a huge 7 mana creature that made a bunch of sand warrior tokens per turn after he entered, and if he was removed, his army would go with him. While there were some workarounds to this, the deck is mainly just ramp really hard into a token army and then give them a pump spell to swing out with. Pretty linear and a bit slow for today's faster commander games. The new Hazazon, however, is all desert themed and is actually way more functional with a mana value of 3. He'll also only cost a few dollars compared to like the $300 you'd have to spend if you wanted an original Hazazon Tamar. Hazazon's Shaper of Sand is a 3 3 legendary human warrior for red, green, and white. He has Desert Walk and reads You may play desert cards from your graveyard, and whenever a desert enters the battlefield, create two 1-1 one, one red, green, and white Sand Warrior creature tokens. Now, my initial thought was to ignore the desert theme and just go for a Naya ramp and landfall type strategy, using deserts to just generate some extra value. And while that build does work, it's not really how I think he's meant to be built. You could basically play any Naya commander and that would have worked just as well. So it needed a little bit of a rethink. And that's when I realized the real way to use Hazazon is to abuse the graveyard ability and bounce desert lands back and forth between the battlefield and the graveyard. So that's what this deck will do today. Abuse the hell out of cards that sacrifice and then recur lands to and from the graveyard. Unfortunately, land recursion strategies do tend to be a bit more on the expensive side to build. So I've upped the budget to $120 this time, just so I can slide in some of the more expensive staples that this deck needs to function. So let's get into this. First up, we have of course our deserts, and there are 16 in our green, white, and red color identity. These are Desert, Desert of the Fervent, Desert of the Indomitable, Desert of the True, Cradle of the Accursed, Dunes of the Dead, Endless Sands, Grasping Dunes, Hashhep Oasis, Hostile Desert, Painted Bluffs, Ramanap Ruins, Scavenger Grounds, Shefet Dunes, Sun Scorched Desert, and Survivor's Encampment. A lot of these lands are just not very good, with plenty of draft chaff in there like Sun Scorched Desert and Painted Bluffs, but we need them for our density of deserts. There are some good ones though, like the colored deserts that come with an ability, and of course Scavenger Grounds, which is a commander staple. But on the whole, most of these are only really helpful because of their desert type. Now, despite not doing the rampant landfall strategy in particular, we are still a lands focused deck, so we do have a sizable ramp package to go over. This includes Farseek, Rampant Growth, Nature's Law, Harrow, Roiling Regrowth, Secure Tribe Elder, Ringbloom Dryad, Wood Elves, Myriad Landscape, and Crows and Birch. You'll notice from this list that we have a lot of green staples mixed in with a bunch of ramp that sacrifices lands. This lets us get repeatable value out of our deserts, sacrificing them to ramp, then pulling them back out with hazards on. None of these cards help find our deserts though, so we have some tutors specifically for those. They are Arrow of Promise, Reap and Sow, Realms Uncharted, and Reshape the Earth. Arrow of Promise is of course the specific desert tutor, and comes with the added upside of making a zombie. And Realms Uncharted is particularly spicy tech with Hazazon, as it puts two of the land cards we search into the graveyard, which we can then play out. Lastly, we have Reshape the Earth, which in the late game can pull out a huge amount of deserts all at once for an instant army with Hazazon. There are more twos we could run, but we'll be seeing plenty of deserts anyway, so we don't really need to stack the deck with ways to find them. We can just draw into them instead. But along with all that land searching, we have one more category of ramp to go over. And that is by looking at cards that allow us to make more land plays each turn. Azusa, Lost But Seeking, Mina and Den, and Druid Class. These cards are important for our strategy, as we want to be able to play and sacrifice multiple deserts in a turn. So not only do they help us ramp out, but if we have a graveyard full of deserts, they can also help us generate soldiers. So that covers all the ways we have to get lands into the hand, graveyard, and play. So let's talk about the payoffs. Those are Rathar, Heart of Keld, Scoot Swarm, Tyler's Provisioner, Phylath, World Sculptor, Avenger of Zendikar, Omnath, Locus of Rage, Velikat Exploration, Philidar Retreat, and Blackblade Reforged. This gives us a wide mix of abilities, including some ways to make extra tokens with cards like Avenger, Omnath, and Phylath. There is a small sub-theme of equipment in the deck, though that is mainly due to one equipment in particular, Skull Clamp. 
Skull Clamp, Swiftfoot Boots, and Black Bow Frauds are the only three equipment. And we run Fighters Class, Axe Guard Armory, and Open the Armory to search them up. I cannot understate how important Skull Clamp is to the functioning of this deck, allowing to turn all those 1 1s we create into cards very cheaply. If it's not dealt with quickly, it is very easy for us to end up drawing a mass amount of cards as you cycle through your Sand Warriors. That's why it's just so important for us to have all these tutors for equipment, even though we're only running three. We need to get Skull Clamp as soon as possible. In the case that you do get a tutor after Skull Clamp has already been used, then of course we have Black Blade Reforged as a great finisher, or Swiftfoot Boots to just help protect our Hazazon. Moving on, we need some ways to sacrifice our lands once they're in play. And for that, we have Need for Speed, Routing Goblin, Harrow, Roiling Regrowth, and Spring Rune Druid, along with Mina and Den, who can bounce lands to hand. Need for Speed is our top tier option, allowing for instant speed sacrifice for no cost. However, using selection of the others will keep our lands going in and out just fine. In terms of recurring lands from the graveyard, we have Splendid Reclamation, World Shaper, and Titania Protector of Argoth. Reclamation and World Shaper can let us do some really big plays, while Titania give us some extra value when we sacrifice a land. Of course, Hazazon will already be doing this, so we don't need a whole lot of other effects to help pull stuff out of the graveyard. But in the late game, when we've ramped really hard, we do need some mana sinks to help finish off our opponents. For that, we have two X spells with Nahiri's Lithoforming and Genesis Wave. Genesis Wave is a favorite of mine, which just lets you dump all your mana into one big spell, and get a bunch of cards off the top of your library. Nahiri's Lithoforming, on the other hand, is especially good with Hazazon. We can use it to sacrifice all our deserts, then, since it increases the amount of lands we can play for the turn, we can then play them all back out of the graveyard again along with drawing all the cards. It's a really good card for the late game to help us generate a lot of tokens, mana, and cards. For more general graveyard recursion, we have Eternal Witness, Genesis, Sun Titan, and Balaged Recovery. Not a whole lot for this deck, but hopefully enough to get back the important pieces, like Skull Clamp, when we really need them. Before we get to the draw and removal stables, there's just a couple more cards that need to be discussed that didn't really fit into a category. We have Anger and Brawn, which are in the deck to help power up our creatures with Haste and Trample, along with Mirror Entity, which is there to make our tokens huge for big swings. And lastly, we have a Harmless Offering. Now, remember way back at the start, Hazazon's first ability is Desert Wall, which makes him unblockable if our opponent controls a desert. Now, there aren't many deserts in most Commander decks, outside of Scavenger Grounds, of course, so this ability is useless most of the time. However, we can use Harmless Offering to donate a desert to our opponents and now our commander is unblockable towards them. Equip up a Black Blade Reforged or using Mirror Entity, and suddenly that ability is very, very deadly. It's just a cool interaction for Hazazon, and I really think it's worth playing since it only takes up one card in the deck. Onto the staples then. For removal, we have Path to Exile, Swords to Plowshares, Beast Within, Generous Gift, Reclamation Sage, and Reap and Sow for our targeted removal, and Cleansing Nova, Austere Command, Undo Inversion, Blasphemous Act and Bane of Progress for our board wipes. We are in the best colours for removal, so this is basically a selection of all the hits while also working to a budget. Our graveyard removal is as consistent as ever, with a Soul Guide Lantern and a Scavenger Grounds. And for once, we can actually reuse Scavenger Grounds since we have all these other deserts to sacrifice. That's right, Scavenger Grounds doesn't actually sacrifice itself, just any desert. So this deck can actually lock down graveyard decks pretty hard if it wants to. Moving on to the draw effects, we have Faithless Looting, Wheel of Misfortune, Harmonize, Mentor of the Meek, Rumor Gatherer, Welcoming Vampire, Valakid Exploration, Skull Clamp, and Return of the Wildspeaker. A mix of draw effects here with some white ETB draw, which works great with our token generation, some draw and discard with the Looting and Wheel, and then some straight green draw with Harmonize and Return of the Wildspeaker. As said before, Skull Clamp is the all-star of this deck, so just make sure that is something you always try to get up and running quite early. For our lands, we of course have the 16 deserts from earlier, along with Canopy Vista, Cinder Glade, Command Tower, Exotic Orchard, Radiant Grove, and Wooded Ridgeline for our dual lands, and 5 forests, 3 mountains, and 3 plains for our basics. A lot of our dual lands are also forests, so they can be searched for with our ramp spells, which helps fix colours in this 3 colour deck. There are no extra utility lands in this deck, since we can't really fit them in, since we need enough basics to allow us to ramp properly. The mana base is just really rough with all those deserts, especially when a bunch of them don't tap for any colour. The best thing you can do is just make sure you always have green in your opening hand, so you can at least cast the green ramp for fixing that mana base. So how does this deck play and try to win? 
Well, as you can probably tell, it starts off ramping as hard as possible dropping Hazazon in as soon as possible to start making tokens. Generally, you're going to want to drop him in around turn 4 with a Destin in hand to immediately get some value. After that, the deck plays out value, ramping hard and drawing cards to build up a big board state as fast as possible. There aren't many breaks on this train, so once you get rolling with a few landfall effects, you're going to quickly have a board full of tokens and more mana than you know what to do with. Some of the key finisher pieces are going to be Avenger of Zendikar and Byleth to make a bunch of creature tokens, and Felidar Retreat to pump everything up or just make even more tokens. Mirror Entity is going to make your tokens huge and Genesis Wave can be used to fill out the entire board once you have a big pile of mana. We also have Reshape the Earth which can be used to pull up to 10 deserts out all at once and flood the board with 20 Sand Warriors which is a really huge play. There aren't any infinite combos in this deck but you don't really need any with the non-infinite combos we do have such as sacrificing all our lands with Need for Speed and casting Splendid Reclamation to then make tons of landfall triggers, or giving someone a desert and hitting them with our commander while equipped with a Blackblade Reforged. There's a lot of lines you can take in this deck and it's mainly just filling the board with lots of creatures and swinging out at people. It's not the fastest deck out there, the players I'm talking about need a lot of mana, but with this much ramp you should be way ahead of the land curve. Even board wipes won't slow you down that much, since if you're ramping hard, Hazazon is pretty cheap to recast and get the ball rolling again. In terms of power, this is absolutely a 7 with this budget. Strong enough to overpower decks like a Precon, but may struggle against decks that like to go even harder. It does pack plenty of interaction, but lacks in protection, so it could be a bit weak to heavy control like stacks or counter spells. The lack of any infinite combos and tutors does stop it from being something like an 8, though it wouldn't be hard to push it up to an 8 in power level. And on that topic, what cards would I run with a higher budget? Well, there's a few. Scape Shift is an obvious inclusion, giving us a bunch of landfall triggers and searching out all our deserts. Basically like an extra version of Reshape the Earth, though at half the mana. Sylvan Safekeeper brings in some of that protection the deck needs, along with giving another sacrifice outlet. An Elvish Reclaimer would slowly let us turn our lands into deserts for extra landfall and tokens. Ancient Green Warden would be an obvious choice for the deck, as it doubles all our landfall triggers. It is actually so good that I struggled to cut it from the deck, and I would have 100% cut Phylath for Green Warden if given the extra budget. If there's one card you can upgrade this deck with, it would be Green Warden. Field of the Dead would be an easy include, despite our fairly tight mana base, as it is just such a broken land with landfall strategies, and the hurdle of seven differently named lands is pretty easy when we've got all these deserts in the deck. I would consider running some token doublers such as Doubling Season, Parallel Lives and Anointed Procession as it would give way more value out of Hazazon's ability and the other token generators in the deck. This is also where I'd look for infinite combos if you want to run those since there are many once you start doubling your tokens. Outside of those specific cards though, just general Naya goodness is how you'd power this up. Run a bunch of good creature tutors and green draw effects, all of which were well outside the budget of this deck. The upgrade pattern is pretty straightforward as we don't have a lot of tutors or fast mana in this deck which are the obvious way you would upgrade something like this. And that's it for this deck tech. Hazazon looks like a really cool commander that isn't just a straightforward landfall commander like I first thought. You can do some really cool recursion stuff with him and the three abilities actually work really well with each other. Let me know how he goes if you build him and until next time, thanks for watching.